But an empty chamber, an empty chamber in the morgue was, with her name on it, was found, can be found in the morgue during Arkham City. Shit, she was alive? But she couldn't be alive. And she couldn't be alive. Talia died in Arkham City, and I don't think her sister would have brought her back to life. Plus, I don't think Bruce Wayne wanted anything to do with her. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. So, I remember when she died in Arkham City. <laughs> that was actually the happiest moment in the Arkham City game. Where she got killed. And I was just like, oh no. Oh, oh well. It, it had to happen. I was more sad about Hugo Strange dying than Talia. <laughs> I was just like... It was, it was a good part of the game, but... Um, here's also some things about it that you don't know. T um... WB Montreal was previously linked to a Destiny-inspired Suicide Squad game. Also, a Arkham continuation based on the Court of Owls. However, Project Sabbath is unknown so far. I, I'll tell you this. I gotta move something real quick. Because, you know, I have to stretch um, I'll tell you this. WB Montreal. It's like, it, it shows why they've been working on stuff for a while. Because they have been, they had projects pushed back, such as, or canceled. Like Suicide Squad that I just read. This Batman, Damian Wayne type game. And now they're working on other projects. I think with the reason they canceled this one and the reason why concept art is leaked online, for me looking at it, it just didn't click. It just didn't feel like a video game I would play. Now, am I upset that there isn't a Batman Beyond-esque type game? Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed, but... It being a continuation of Arkham Knight just didn't feel right. <laughs> it rhymed, by the way. Um, it just didn't feel it. I didn't feel like they should have released it. You know, I don't. I'm glad they didn't go so go so far of making it. But Suicide Squad one would have been interesting. I mean, also having White Rabbit as a wrinkly old lady. It's kind of stupid, but I wouldn't want it <laughs> in a video game. So, I I don't know what to think of it, but I I hope WB Montreal does something amazing. I hope Rocksteady people get back on their case. Maybe they'll release something. Who knows? Um, I, I hope they announce something. I'm confident that they will by the end of this year. If not, then... Oh, well, I was wrong. So, anyway, I'll be right back. Gotta, gotta check on my co-host. <laughs> I'll be right back.
Anyway, I'm back. <laughs> Is anyone here? So, uh, let's see. Uh, didn't even know this one. Arkham Asylum turned 10 years old. Wow. Didn't realize that went by quick. Huh. Uh, I, I hope that they... I hope Rocksteady announces a video game soon. I don't know why, but... What did you think of the new Tom King cover with Batman Breaking Bane? I hope that they go back to the right direction of Batman with Batman you know, kills Bane. <laughs> I know that a lot of people sort of find that kind of weird, but it's like um I just feel like they need to have Batman cross the line. Then he sort of realizes what he did and makes a vow to never do it again. I just feel like they, with Batman, you know, losing Alfred and stuff, it just, it's, it sucks. And hopefully they'll do something good. Marvel Disney Days Views Marvel Studios new Phase Four trailer. Um, again, it just the funniest story ever is with the MCU fans posting Tom Holland just unfollowed Sony. It kind of makes me laugh because it's just like Sony kind of looks at it it's like oh whatever. <laughs> Um, I just I I think it's childish of how MCU fans react to the the way the way they you know Sony and stuff handle things you know I I will say this. Marvel MCU fans just need to grow up. Stop being childish. Things don't go your way, unfortunately. Just deal with it. You know? It's business. They Sony is thinking what's best for them. Everyone else would do the same thing if they were in the position of Sony. They would think what's best for them. And... Here's the thing about it. Sony handled Spider-Man better than Marvel MCU did. Marvel took away the foundation of Peter Parker, Uncle Ben, and replaced it with Tony. Stark. Tony Stark is not an inspiring individual compared to Uncle Ben. Tony Stark was just about gadgets, money, and stuff. And fame. You know. Uncle Ben told Peter the amount of money, the amount of fame... The amount of gadgets, amount of gadgets, doesn't make a hero. Great power comes great responsibility. Those words are better than Tony Stark telling Peter, "I want you to be better than me." Which, if you look at Peter Parker and the MCU. He was obsessed with being like Tony Stark. 
instead of being his own individual. Spider-Man Peter Parker and the M- in the Sony universe, the Sony films, the Sam Brammy trilogy, the Amazing Spider-Man films, Peter Parker became his own individual by growing from a tragedy. Uh, I wish they did the Spider- the Amazing Spider-Man, the Amazing Spider-Man three film, just to see Peter Parker grow, to inspire people, and you got to see it in the final parts of the film where he takes on the Rhino, which they ruined a good opportunity. We put good opportunity with Paul Giamatti as Rhino. They ruined that, by the way. That was a good opportunity for you know him to be you know a villain. He looked pretty cool in it. But Peter Parker and the original Spider Man trilogy, you got to see him grow. You got to see him remember what his uncle taught him. Like I love the moment in the film in Spider Man I think it was Spider Man two, where Aunt May gives Peter a motivational speech to how to grow. Not just as a hero, but as an individual. You didn't get that in the Amazing Spider-Man film. uh, The Spider-Man Homecoming films and stuff. And the thing I love about the Amazing Spider-Man was that you got Martin Sheen playing Uncle Ben, which I thought was brilliant. But you never got that in the Spider-Man MCU films. You never got to see Peter grow as himself. I know a lot of people are like, well, you know, he did in Homecoming. But it's just like, it wasn't enough. It was just boring. I'm sorry. MCU Spider-Man is boring. He's not fun. He's not relatable. He was all about gadgets. And stuff. I know Peter is about gadgets. I know he's a brilliant technology whiz. But... The heart of the story of Spider-Man as, you know, the term, great power comes great responsibility. Peter didn't have responsibilities. Peter, in the MCU films, was lazy. He was lazy with the suit. Because the suit basically does the work. He just has to wear it. Like, I miss the underdog Spider-Man. The guy who had to make his own suit. Make his own web shooters and stuff. And him learning his powers, how to control his powers. The MCU Spider-Man just was lazy. It was just the name and the look rented out to Marvel without the morals and choices of Peter Parker. And... I hope that Sony goes does something salvage what Marvel did and make it better than before. And I know a lot of people are like, it ain't going to be better than before. Look at Amazing Spider-Man 2. Look at Spider-Man 3. Look at Venom. And it's like, you know what? Fuck you. Venom was entertaining. <laughs> you know, you just want to look at the bad things. You don't want to look at the good things like the Sam Raimi films. Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, even Spider-Man 3, which Spider-Man 3 is more entertaining than Homecoming. And the Into the Spider-Verse, the Spider-Man, the spectacular Spider-Man cartoon, the, you know, those things. I mean, look what Disney did with the animation. They just made Ultimate Spider-Man and um, Spider-Man cartoon. Those sucked, by the way. Here's the thing about it. I hope that the Sony films go back to basics of mentioning Uncle Ben. And the great power comes great responsibility. And I I think, for me, Sony did the right thing, in my opinion. They took... They did something right. They put Marvel on notice, in my opinion. 